The Honourable Member for Calgary Centre. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. On November 22nd, I rose in this House and asked a question of the government linking taxes, well, carbon taxes in particular, with the rate of inflation we're experiencing in Canada. I, I used the example of Japan and the decisions they were making to address inflation in Japan versus the ones we we're making here. I got a response from the Associate Minister of Finance, the, minister, the member for, for Edmonton Centre, which was more of a song and a dance than a reply. So I hope I get a better response from the government tonight. But let's address this. Japan is experiencing in November 4.2% inflation. Canada, uh, on the other hand, was experiencing 6.8% inflation. As a result of the inflation Japan was experiencing, they cancelled their increase in the carbon tax, which is expected to take effect in April of this year. But it's been cancelled. Canada, on the other hand, is, in is increasing their carbon tax by 30%. Now, notably, Canada's carbon tax right now is $50 per ton, rising to 65 if this government continues on the path it's on. Yeah. Japan's carbon tax is about $3 Canadian per ton of carbon. So there's a significant difference between what we're doing here, and you can see why inflation is much more of a problem in Canada. Carbon tax this year is expected to bring in $8.27 billion into Canada. But not to be outdone, when pressed on the issue, the governor of the Bank of Canada actually admitted, after some study, that the carbon tax itself was contributing 0.4% to the inflation rate in Canada. So instead of 6.8%, without the carbon tax, we'd have an inflation rate of 6.4%. Now that amount is going to increase by about 1.3 times, so about 0.52% of our inflation rate is going to be part and parcel of the carbon tax. Let me bring home what that means. So this summer, we had uh, oil prices rise. West Texas, West Texas Intermediate, our grade that we, we measure our oil on, was about $110 per barrel in the world. That equated to about $210 per, gal per liter when you're filling up in Calgary. Uh, think about the last time oil was that high. It was actually $1.40 per liter. So there's an extra 70 cents per liter it has gone up. Part of that is inflation. Part of that is the price inflator. So, but apples to apples, it should be about a buck seventy-two per liter versus two ten. Where's the extra forty cents? Well, I'll tell you, Madam Speaker, it's in the form of taxes on gas. It's uh, excise taxes. It is carbon taxes. It is clean fuels taxes. Now, I know the narrative on the other side is going to tell me that you know X percent of the economists around the world believe that a carbon tax is the most effective way of pricing carbon and reducing carbon emissions, and I could agree. So let me ask if so, why are so many other taxation members, uh, mechanisms required? The clean fuels standard, the clean electricity standard that's on its way, emissions caps, some targeted at specific industries, vehicle mandates, uh, maximum, massive subsidization of chosen paths forward, billions of dollars of the government spending needlessly, all of which are by design inflationary. This is inflation built upon inflation. The savings of Canadians is at risk. The energy security of Canadians is at risk. Will the government come clean and provide Canadians clarity on what the future looks like in the designed inflationary spiral that they are uh, designing here? Thank you. The RO Parliamentary Secretary for the Minister of Labour. Well, thank you very much, Speaker. <clears throat> Unfortunately, with the member uh, from Calgary Centre uh, failed to identify is something that has become quite obvious. Climate action is no longer a theoretical political debate. It's an economic necessity. A few months ago, the Parliamentary Budget Officer published an analysis showing that climate change has and will continue to negatively impact the Canadian economy. The reality, Speaker, is that we can lead the fight against climate change and we can do it in a way that creates good paying jobs and new businesses for Canadians from coast to coast to coast. Our government also understands and appreciates the fact that a national price on pollution is the most effective and the least costly way of reducing greenhouse gas emissions. And let's make it very clear that our price on pollution does not make life less affordable for the large majority of Canadians. In jurisdictions that do not have their own pricing system uh, consistent with the federal benchmarks, 
um, such as Ontario, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, approximately 90% of the direct proceeds from the fuel charge that are being directly returned to the residents to those uh, provinces through the Climate Action Incentive Payment are very significant. In 2023, for instance, these increased payments mean a family of four will receive $745 in Ontario, $832 in Manitoba, $1,101 in Saskatchewan, and $1,079 in Alberta. In addition, families in rural and small communities like mine are eligible to receive an additional 10%. So the reality is that most households are getting back more than they pay. Speaker, when it comes uh, to the higher cost of living Canadians are dealing with, our government understands that, and it's difficult for many for people to put food on the table. So that's why we took action. We took action um, through many measures that were recently passed, including um, making um, life more affordable through the doubling of the GST, through dental and rental uh, relief, through our child care plan, which I am on the phone all the time with my constituents that tell me are making a real difference. On inflation, you know, there's some good news in Canada. It was 8.1% in June, and now it's down to 6.3%. While that's still high, it's lower than what we have seen in many of our peer countries. For example, Speaker, in the United States, just south of the border, it's 6.5. In Euro uh, areas, it's 9.2. The United Kingdom, 10.5. Still, inflation at 6.3 in Canada is too high, in my opinion, and we continue to take measures to uh, help reduce that. Well, the targeted investments we made to support Canadians or economy through the pandemic have meant Canada has experienced a strong rebound like no other from the pandemic recession. We do understand that the coming months will continue to be difficult times for many Canadians, for our families, for our friends, and for our neighbours. And that's why we continue to support the Canadians who need it most when they need it um, right now. So I spoke about some of our measures. So for instance, our affordability plan has been providing up to $12.1 billion in new supports with many measures continuing in 2023 to help make life more affordable for millions of Canadians. So just on the GST credit, which we are doubling for six months, well, this is delivering 2.5 in additional targeted support to roughly 11 million individuals and families. Many of these are seniors. Many of them are young people that are getting that relief right now. Thank you very much, Speaker. Center. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. And I thank my colleague for, for his responses. And as I said, he was going to talk about the price on pollution, how everybody agrees that that's the way to go forward here except when you're addressing inflation. So there are certain mechanisms here that you have. The government has tools to actually address. It's going to have to ha choose which path it's going to have here. But inflation is a real concern for all Canadians. I will also point out to him that inflation is measured differently in different jurisdictions. If people believe that our inflation rate is lower in Canada than the United States, take a look at the way we measure it versus the way they measure it in the United States, and they'll find that it's that housing deflated is actually the difference between the two. It actually is lower inflation in the United States. However, we do measure it, and I, I appreciate his reading the statistics that says we're lower. In fact, we're not, though. Uh, he did talk about the parliamentary budget officer. He's going to talk about the parliamentary budget officer, and he's going to have to pay attention to his other report that actually says this is the, the carbon tax is costing Canadians a lot more than he is giving it credit for. This is a problem. It needs to be considered in his inflation adjustments, and we have to address it going forward. No more narrative. Let's address the inflation. Parliamentary Secretary. Well, thank you, Speaker. Um, our support is targeted, and it is fiscally responsible. Our government wants to help Canadians get through this challenging economic time marked by high inflation. That is why we are continuing to provide inflation relief through our affordability plan and other targeted measures to Canadians who need it the most, the most vulnerable. Canadians can count on us to continue supporting those who need it while also carefully managing our finances and protecting our environment. That's what Liberals do best. Thank you.